Yo, what's up? Yeah, I'm back already. I know, it's crazy. I wasn't gone for like two years this time. But we're here with another fish video. So basically, if you aren't aware of what's going on, go watch this video right here. It's the last video I've made, and it's the first in a series of videos I'm going to be making about this big old project I have going on. I'm just recovering from a cold, and I need a tissue. Man. If I could never get sick again, I wouldn't. Basically, in the last video, I explained this big project I'm working on where uh, it's this huge book full of bizarre and weird fish. Uh, it follows a man, an explorer, journeying through the oceans, finding these bizarre creatures. It's basically like a catalog he's kept of all these creatures. And uh, it's going to be really cool. I'm really excited for it. So. Last time, I drew the kelp fish, which uh, is a, I thought it was pretty cool. I liked it a lot. It's this fish that looks uh, almost identical to a piece of kelp that has been snipped off of the branch, and it lives in these big kelp forests, and it just kind of blends in very perfectly. The way I'm thinking about this book is this man is exploring deeper and deeper into the ocean, okay? So the first fish he finds is going to be very shallow waters. You know, it's going to be right, kind of maybe shallow, simple fish, small fish. As he gets deeper into the open ocean, it becomes pretty weird. And as he goes deeper down into the ocean, it's, oh, it's really weird now. But I was thinking, I was like, man, I jumped straight to the kelp forest last time. You know, I was like, what's the first biome he would find? A pretty shallow biome. Oh, a kelp forest. Those are usually pretty shallow, right? Well, I was thinking, you know what's even shallower than shallow waters? A beach, sand, or a coast of some kind. And I hadn't even thought about it, but like, there's so much life on the coast. There's birds, there's crabs, there's sea creatures like uh, barnacles or mussels that live on uh, docks or rocks or, you know, all kinds of things. Oh, bars, dude. Bars. I was like, man, I really want to make a creature that lives kind of on the coast, in the sand, you know, maybe really close to the water. Maybe it has one foot in the water, one foot out. What, you know, whatever. And I think the best creature to go with is going to be a crab. And crabs are one of the most underappreciated types of animals, in my opinion. They're just like giant tanks. Like a king crab, dude. No one can mess with the king crab. It's it's invincible, basically. Uh, and it just... Crabs just rip through things like sea urchins. Like, it's nothing. They're just absolute units. And they, they don't get enough appreciation. So, I was gonna make a crab. I want it to be kind of strange. I'm not just gonna make a normal crab. Three different kinds of crabs I could pick from when it comes to how they live, where they live. This kind of crab, like a king crab, live completely in the water. They breathe using gills just like a fish would. Uh, and there are a lot of crabs that do that, just live underwater. Then there are crabs, like this boy right here, uh, who, they still use gills to breathe, just like a normal crab would, except they spend most of their life out of the water. The same way a human would hold its breath, like, <gasps> and keep oxygen in its lungs and then go underwater, they can hold water inside of them and kind of filter through it and get all the oxygen out of that water while they stay on land. So these things will, a lot of what these crabs do is they're scavengers, so they'll like wait for low tides and then go and eat things that have washed up on the shore. So they'll like hide under the sand during high tides and then pop out and eat a bunch of stuff that washed up during low tides. They look like they make the Mr. Krabs noise when they walk. Very few crabs, from my understanding, use lungs. One of them is the coconut crab. I think it's basically kind of like a giant hermit crab. Uh, these things are massive. They have the strongest claw strength of any crab. They're, they're crazy. They're super cool. Well, well, when they're not scavenging, they just straight up eat, like, coconuts. They just bust open coconuts. They eat birds. Look, 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 look. Here's an image of one killing a bird. Dude, those are my three options for crabs. 
A crab that lives completely underwater, a crab that uses water to breathe but mostly lives on land, and a crab that just straight up breathes out of lungs and lives on land. I'm probably not going to use a crab that's completely underwater since I kind of want it to hang out on the coast, but I kind of came into this with not knowing exactly what I want, and I figured I could just explore, try different things, uh, see what sticks, see what doesn't, bounce ideas off of people. I just want to mess around and find a cool idea for a crab. 80 species of crab, okay. 10 most beautiful crabs in the world. I really do like that crabs come in, like, awesome colors. I really think that's super pretty. And I think, uh... I really wouldn't mind doing, like, a super multicolored crab. I think doing a crab with a ton of different colors on it, like this... Dude, that's so cool! <laughs> Instantly, look at look at the one in the top corner up here, uh, the brown one. That doesn't even look like a crab. A orangutan crab, I like him. Oh, whoa. Okay. Whoa. Scroposa, I like. Okay, I'm feeling this music. I like him. I like his like dwindly legs. Although I feel like that wouldn't make sense for a land crab. Maybe it would. I like his shape. Okay, I misspelled this, but it's fine because I still got some results. Uh, I think, whoa, he blends in so well. It's really cool. Crab database. Oh, whoa. It's just like an entire website devoted to crab photo gallery. Yes, please. Whoa! Dude, I like him! What is he? Oh, I like this guy's shape a lot. Okay, so there's an idea for a cool crab. A crab that acts almost like a transformer. What if his survival tactic is somehow turning into something he's not and intimidating predators? Uh, maybe he makes himself look bigger. Maybe he makes himself look like another native predator. Oh, what's his deal? What's he all upset about? Dude. Okay. So a hermit crab type thing is not a bad idea either. Not in the sense of like built like a hermit crab in the sense that it uses... What if it uses like trees as its shell somehow? Like driftwood or... How could it use... Could it make a shell... Oh, what if it acts like the junk bug? Hold on basically uses corpses of other bugs to create like a camouflage for itself. So they basically have these little things that stretch out on the outside of them it looks like. That kind of keep this mess of corpses all stuck together. Look how cool that- imagine if a crab did that but maybe it did it with driftwood so it could blend in with trees. Dude there's just like every crab on here. I like him a lot. Oh, whoa, that's what he looks like, that's what he looks like without the shell. Weird. Wait, what do hermit crabs look like without the shell? I've never seen a hermit crab without the shell. How did I not know they had that? I didn't know they had this big muscular thing that kind of grips onto the shell. Which, of course they do. Well, I don't know why I didn't know that. Uh, I just never thought about it. I can make a crab that has that big muscular tail like a uh, piece on the end of it. Maybe you could even use it for different things. That tail would really be used for carrying. What if it was used for crushing? No, that's what the claws are for. What if the crab didn't have claws? Can, is it still a crab if it doesn't have claws? Like, is it, would an animal without claws still be classified as a crab? I don't know what criteria you have to meet to be a crab, but whatever it is, I'm gonna figure out a way to meet it. <laughs> I wanna become a crab. Just you wait, give me a year, boy's gonna have some claws. Oh, dude, what if it was like a crab that was like very proficient at climbing trees? So the coconut crab is actually very proficient at climbing trees from my understanding, but like what if it had like a monkey-like tail where it would just hang from trees and it could like drop down on prey? Like it would just kind of dangle there and then it would drop, let go with its tail and drop and it have its claws out and it would just like I feel like that's a really elaborate hunting strategy 
but like the drop bears in Australia. Imagine going somewhere and saying, watch out for drop crabs. This website is like... Whoa, what is, what is he doing? Oh, he's taking like a jacuzzi bath, it looks like. My man's is vibing. Dude, 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 dude. Whoa. Oh, I like him a lot. This is, this doesn't seem real to me. Everything about underwater and sky. Interesting. What is this? This. Whoa, whoa. Banded coral shrimp. I feel like I discover, like, tin new fish every time I even just Google the word fish. I really like his long spindly legs. Let's see if there are any other crabs that catch my eye. Oh, I like him. Decorator crab. Decorator crab. I assume he decorates himself by putting coral and stuff on him. I could make kind of a knockoff decorator crab. Uh... Oh man, these are some of the coolest looking crabs out there just because they, they just put stuff on them. And they all look so vastly different because they all put different stuff on them. Okay. Okay, I might have to make a variation of the decorator crab. Whoa, that's a tattoo right there. That's a tattoo right there, buddy. Oh, there, there's my main guy. He's built like me. <laughs> oh. What is, what is his deal? Looks like someone poured wax all over him. It looks like someone took this crab and went and s forced everything behind it up to the front and it all went to the claws and then this crab became a thing. That makes me really uncomfortable. Oh, the more I look at it, the more I don't like it. Hmm. It doesn't help that his mouth can be seen as oddly human. It looks like an upper and a lower lip. He shouldn't look like that. Uh, in fact, I think someone's gonna have to go ahead and arrest him. That's a pretty illegal body. Uh, I might just go ahead and make a citizen's arrest on him real quick. In fact, I might just call it for public nudity. Yeah. I'm gonna call it for public indecency, and I'm gonna make a citizen's arrest, and, or just kill him. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and doodle some ideas. Uh, might do it on camera, might do it off camera, I'm gonna do it later. I will maybe call and talk to some people about some ideas for crabs, but the inspiration phase is while it's never ending for this video in particular it's done but it is the next day and i have my good friend cohen Comer or cohen van booger uh, yeah, that's my name i'm a disembodied <laughs> voice coming out of a computer i don't actually exist but don't tell kona uh i'll let that part out so i don't hear it good now cohen is a good friend of mine and a better creature designer than I am, so I figured because I have such a loose, vague idea and so many ideas for this creature, I would bounce some of them off of him and we could doodle some ideas together. So, Cohen, today we will be making mm -hmm. a crab. A crab? I saw a they. Crab. I saw they already made a crab. We're making a second crab. But don't spoil that. I'm don't not spoil gonna. That. I, I won't spoil it. I won't spoil it. Yes, Cohen is helping me out with some creature designs for this book. But don't spoil what you've done. I won't. So, here were some of my inspiration photos, okay? Okay. Alright. Oh, that's a that's lot cool. of pictures. So, I liked how this this boy right here... Uh, I like how his claws make him into, like, one solid shape. You know? Like, he just turns into a hill transformers exactly i was thinking it'd be kind of cool to have a crab that can like transform in a weird way maybe it like mm -hmm. somehow makes itself maybe it has markings that whenever it uh holds its body a certain way it looks like a predator or like a different animal the apex predator of that area a crab this is a junk bug right here 
basically <laughs> they kind of look like this this is an i think it's an exaggerated version of what they look like but it's this idea where they have these little things that they use to hold a giant piles crap. of corpses on their back yeah and i thought it'd be a cool idea to have a crab that does something similar to that where he kind of uh, maybe he stores driftwood or something on him, and like a decorator crab, kinda. Yeah, or like look, the... this is a decorator crab right here. Oh wow, that was pretty. That was really cool. I immediately thought of the cadaver collector from D and D. Yeah. Oh, is that the thing that puts the bodies on its back spikes? Yep. Uh, yeah, so something like that. Now, my third idea is you see how hermit crabs have this weird tail thing that they use to attach themselves to the shells? Mm-hmm. Well, you know how Australia has their folklore of drop bears? Uh-huh. Well, I was thinking, what if this tail-like appendage, instead of being used to hold onto a shell could hold on to a branch of some kind, and they're basically like drop crabs. Drop crabs? As something they want to attack walks underneath it, they'll drop from a branch and fall onto it with their giant claws. I mean, uh, if you want to go that route, it's definitely possible, but you'd have to specify that they don't attack people with Australian accents. But only Yes, I know, absolutely. Uh, evolutionarily speaking, Australian people are invincible. Yeah. That's why they survived. <laughs> down under. It's milk. the only way you can survive if you just have, uh, if you're built like a honey badger. There is no other. Uh, there is no other explanation. I mean, it's the only way. Uh, before we before we get into which ones we uh, like the most, I feel like a good thing to think of right now is we got a lot of what, uh, where we don't have a lot of where and why. Let's start with where. Would you prefer this? Uh, part of the story, I guess, or this creature, would you prefer it to live in the shallow coral reefs where all sorts of colors uh, intersect? Would you prefer it to uh, take place on a sandy beach where all the where the sun reflects brighter than the sky? Or would you prefer it to just... Uh, would you prefer it to transpire in the very beginning of the book where he's, like, basically on the on the brink of a jungle? I would. Uh, I think the final option I like the most, where it's kind of almost like he's working. He's about to go into the water, but on his way into the water on the coast, maybe a coast with a lot of foliage and trees, he spots this crab. Excellent. Well, uh, I guess we're going with the drop crab then. Uh, the drop crab seems like the ideal one. Yeah, I mean, if you want to go with something very interesting from the get-go, if you want to take it a little more vanilla, I feel like we should go with the more camouflaging crab, maybe. Uh, what was okay. your... And maybe the compact-shaped crab, but who knows. I think the drop crab is def definitely the most interesting right now. I, I think the drop crab is the most interesting, too. And I actually really do like the idea of it. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be kind of cool to start with something that interesting as almost like a hook. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then when you take it, uh, you take it back just a little bit with like the, uh, the, kelp sea, the kelp fish. Yeah. Yeah. I like this coral crab. I like how his eyes kind of look like the coral as well. Yeah, that, that, I did that, I'm gonna be honest, I did that totally by accident, except I didn't hire me as a creature designer. <laughs> uh, no, but like you said, like you said, these are the eyes, and the rest is, like, either real coral or fake coral-like pr protrusions, probably real coral. You don't even need to, like, have a whole section on it in the book, one of these could just be a little he hidden easter yeah exactly i think uh he could illustrate some landscapes as well like some coral landscapes and things like this could be in the background before we get into what it eats uh i had a quick another quick different idea instead of it dropping on prey to devour it what if it's uh if you look at my stream uh was up on a tree you know uh-huh 
on the coconut tree specifically. And these coconuts, which are proven to kill people when impacting, just so happen to be snapped up by a pair of claws and drop down. Hey, wait, I can do this. So the crab snips the coconut, it falls down onto a creature's head, and boom. Okay, that's not a bad idea either. And the cool thing is it could kind of look like a coconut too. Oh, we should base this thing off a of coconut crab either way. Absolutely. Because as far, as far as I know, that's the only crab that can climb the trees. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, have you seen that video of a coconut crab just straight up killing a bird? What? Yeah. <laughs> no, I want to. <laughs> it climbed up a tree while the bird was sleeping. It broke its wing, and then the bird fell. It broke its other wing, and then just proceeded to eat it. Bro. <laughs> this dude. <laughs> this dude right here. I do, re I do still really love the idea of drop crab though. Just Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we'll play with both the ideas. Uh, I'm gonna try to make the crab look like a coconut. I feel like these these drop crabs would be very top heavy. Like they have a lot of armor on their head, but not as much on their butt. Oh yeah, because their butts looking up at the sky covered by leaves, so they don't really need. I think so far, I do love drop crab, but I, I think I'm leading towards coconut crab. Okay. Which sounds very so narcissistic because I came up with the idea, but I, I kind of just love the sketches you're doing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like I like this guy. Look at him go. He's got a neat silhouette too. It does. Also, just general question, do you want to tackle frogs in this book or so at some point, or is it going to be mainly like uh, like uh, ocean creatures? That is a good question. I don't know. Uh, I guess I could, but he, they would have to be like, once again, on the shore. Also, I don't want to make this too like commercialized, but that did get me immediately started about the, the thought of like maybe a sequel book where you tackle like ponds and rivers. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, because ponds and river fish are just as interesting. Yeah. All fish are interesting. Uh, or even, like, arctic waters. Oh, yeah. Where you look at, like, seals and, like, all that good stuff, polar bears. I'm gonna steal your ideas. <laughs> <laughs> what if the coconut... What if the thing that clipped the coconuts had long arms so that it could reach coconuts from far away? Yeah. That's what I was trying to get at earlier, but I suck at communicating. Uh, yeah, let me figure this out. Also, it doesn't need to adhere to the exact shape of a coconut. It just needs to resemble it like a coconut. Because no one, uh, not. not many animals are going to be looking up into the tree like, is that coconut real? Is that coconut, yeah. you know? <laughs> not for long. <laughs> <laughs> Until the coconut crab strikes. Oh yeah, I feel like if it's just dangling here, a, a drop crab would also be more efficient at escaping though, because if it's in a tree, a bird could come eat it. But if it's a drop crab, it just falls to the ground. Maybe maybe it does both. Maybe it first releases the coconuts, and if that fails, it just drops. Maybe. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. And then and the birds don't find it suspicious, because they're like, oh yeah, coconuts are dropping, nothing interesting here. Right. Maybe it's not even a coconut. Maybe it's just something that looks like a coconut, but it works. Yeah, it's whatever grows in the area. Yeah. But some form of fruit that has a very hard, heavy exterior grows in the area. Copyright uh, free coconut. <laughs> Knock off coconut. <laughs> Knock off a nut. No, maybe we should just call it... <laughs> Maybe we should just call it a, a knockoff a nut. <laughs> <laughs> like how products will take uh, one product and name it just like a more specific, like, uh, what's that organic form of Oreos? There's like one thing that's called Oreos and there's an organic brand called like chocolate cream sandwich cookies, you know? <laughs> so instead of coconut, these are brown hard bowling ball fruit. <laughs> I love the implication that bowling balls exist. <laughs> <laughs> so what if this thing had hair? Like a coconut. 
Oh, that'd be kind of cool. Could it also use the hair for some kind of sensory thing? I guess it wouldn't need that. Maybe, maybe. Oh, why? This guy could climb up trees and knock coconuts off on purpose. So that little creatures come scurrying towards the coconuts to eat it. And, and then, then it knocks another coconut down to kill him. Yeah, or it just drops and kills him. Oh, that's a pretty good idea, too. And it's camouflaged from birds, too, because it looks like a coconut. Okay, I like that idea. So he basically sets, like, a trap. Also, kind of relevant, I found an image of a coconut crab. Uh, I'll copy it onto my camera so the viewers can see it. I found an image of a coconut crab on a, on a, on a garbage bin. Uh, and I kind of love it. This aren't they the right largest? Here. Aren't they the largest arthropods uh, in existence right now that we know of? I believe it. I think arthropods or invertebrates in general have a harder time in taking oxygen with lungs or something, so they can't get huge. Yeah, which sucks for them. Yeah, ha ha. Neo. Hate to be an arthropod. Hate to be an arthropod. We heard the mammal gang believe in lung <laughs> superiority. <laughs> Man, I sure do love in taking loads of oxygen. This post was brought to you by the Mammal Gang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love this. Another idea. I'm looking at images of coconuts right now. Uh, uh, the young ones of this species could start off like green. Oh as yeah. They get older, as they get older, they get more of the brownish coloration. That's really cool. Yeah, I think the people watching this video are, video are gonna be like, wow, I, I should hire these dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically Cohen. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually do hire Cohen. Cohen does great work. Yeah, hire me. I, I, I'm so available, especially right now. If you hire me at the point of uploading this video, I'll definitely say yes to any project and not busy in the slightest. So... Yeah, don't worry about it. No. <laughs> and you can take me. I can. I will confirm this. Cohen complains to me all the time about how much free time he has. Yeah, I, I, I send Cohen a message every morning at the exact same time, being like, hey, I got too much free time. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's not just a, a complaint. He uses that free time to write a, a novel about his free time. Yeah. It was a, it was a standard summer evening, like I had seen many times before. As I looked outside the window, I thought to myself, "Why am I not doing anything?" And then I realized I am doing something. I'm writing a book that will soon be a New York Times bestseller, yet still some somehow be unsuccessful. Then I then I realized I should probably get something to drink, and I realized I'm underage and can't drink alcohol. Please cut that out, Coda. <laughs> okay, no, I, I understand. It, it will be cut out. I'm saying it's because it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Cops don't come to my house, please. <laughs> American police, please do not infiltrate my house. Yeah, they're like, oh, he's drinking in the Netherlands? I believe uh, he's not 21? <laughs> uh, if the if the American cops were to have to go out here every time someone in in Europe drank before the age of twenty one, they would be losing their shit. They would be so busy. That'd be so funny. <laughs> Not only because drinking age is eighteen here, <laughs> which is a whole three years earlier, but also because drinking age here is very vague. <laughs> Yeah, from what I understand, it's not difficult to... No. <laughs> it's pretty common in the culture to just drink at whatever yeah. age. I estimate it's because of the overall culture that's existed because of drinking, and also the history of uh, sailing. Because when you're on a ship, all you drink, all you do is drink. <laughs> right. Maybe... If we wanna, if we wanna talk evolution, maybe it started out as this thing, but then eventually it got turned into that thing. Started out as what thing? Look at my stream. It started out as this fellow. Hold on. But then it started out as this fellow. But then okay. it began climbing up. And then, like, 
Ooh. I, I can see that happening. That's pretty cool. I'm a coconut now. Are you proud of your mom? <laughs> proud of me, mom. Proud of me, my great, 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 Oh, I get, I you know, coconut, wait, coconut crabs can live up to being like a hundred something years old, though. I feel like, I feel like the, the way we've currently set these up, they're probably gonna have way faster reproduction cycles. Not too fast, because otherwise they wouldn't be able to grow that big, and we want them to be big. They're like coconut sized. But they can definitely get younger than coconut crabs, because coconut crabs, uh, I guess they didn't have a lot of uh, evolving to do very quickly and also they are much larger and generally if something's larger it tends to have a slower reproductive cycle because it's bigger also happens to be the excuse i use for my penis size no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I just got a slow reproductive cycle. I promise. I brought us down to the level of pee pee jokes. Okay. You did, but hey, you got a slow reproductive cycle, which means hey, girl, I can go all night and all week <laughs> and all month. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. You want to do a courting ritual? Because we'll be busy for the next couple months. <laughs> <laughs> the coconut, the coconut, uh, the the coconut you're drawing right now kind of reminds me of strong man. If he wasn't coconut, <laughs> he does. <laughs> Junior, I turn myself into a coconut. But didn't Rick and Morty already do something like this, strong man? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, Junior. So coconut crabs seem to have really big front legs and smaller back legs. I guess that's what uh -huh. helps them climb. Probably. Yeah, because the front legs would be the main ones. So I'm gonna include that in this design. Front le front legs would be the main ones to like climb on. The shoreline drew nearer with every step. It wasn't far now. However, I still couldn't see it through the thick foliage that surrounded me. The tropical forest was filled with a wide variety of plant life, flowers, bushes, and coconut trees. I heard a loud crash behind me. Something had fallen from one of the trees. There lied a coconut. I looked up to see what caused it to fall, but just saw more coconuts. No animals of any kind. I only made it a few paces before another coconut narrowly missed me. I looked up into the trees above. I had to move out of the way quickly. Another coconut fell. This one aimed perfectly at my head. What was causing this? I wanted to know what was up there. I shook the tree vigorously. The remaining coconuts hit the ground with a thud. There were three or four normal coconuts strewn about. But then I saw it. One of them looked very different. It had two eye stalk like protrusions in the front and a thick green vine growing out the back. The vine was curled at the end, much like a monkey's tail. The entire bottom of the coconut seemed segmented into different pieces. I reached out to touch it, but before I could, legs sprang forth from the fruit. It had three legs on either side of its body, and two long, narrow claws in the front. This wasn't a coconut at all. It was a crab. The crustacean quickly scampered up a different tree, all the way up to the top by the coconuts. It wrapped the vine, which I now knew to be a tail of some sort, around the branch of a tree, tucked its legs and claws into its stomach, and hung there just as naturally as any coconut. Its camouflage was amazing. It had two round black eyes on the end of stalks, as well as a black marking on its forehead between them. Altogether, they resembled the three holes of a coconut. The shell of the crab was covered in a light brown hair, just like the fruit it was trying to mimic. 
As my gaze drifted across the treetops, I realized that there were many more crabs just like him. There were at least two or three others in my vision alone. I watched one as it hunted its prey. A small rodent-like creature decided to take a break under the tree. It stood for no more than two or three seconds before a coconut came crashing down onto its head. The crab slowly made its way down the trunk to collect its reward. This crab was quite the trickster. It would hang in trees and drop coconuts on creatures' heads as they passed by. Its camouflage was so good that the creatures beneath didn't suspect a thing, just as I didn't suspect a thing when it was trying to kill me. Not only that, but it was very hard to spot for birds or any other natural predators. It was unsuspecting to both its predators and prey. After all, there's nothing more natural than a falling coconut.